Okay, today's tutorial is going to be basically creating a very basic elevator in the uh, Blender game engine. The um, Blender game engine, uh, where we're using Blender 2.5, Blender 2.5 beta. Um, and it's a relatively simple thing to do. So let's get started. I'm going to quickly just uh, change our Blender render up here to Blender game. And we'll set the view to game logic. I have one to go into front view here. And I'm going to scale on the z-axis and just make that a little smaller like that. That's our elevator right there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm at frame 1 here. I'm going to hit G and Z and move the elevator down like so. And I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe for the location. Then I'm going to go up to, we'll say, frame 100. I'll hit I again and set another keyframe for location. And then we'll go to 51, frame 51. I'm pressing up and down arrow to jump 10 frames at a time. So right here you can see I'm at frame 51. I'm going to G, Z to grab and move on the Z axis up to about here. I'll hit I and set a keyframe for there. Now you can see as we go through our keyframes, you can see that elevator moving up and down. So we got our animation. Now we just have to put that into the game engine here real quick. We have that cube selected. We'll select uh, and sensors here. We'll say always to begin with and then we'll say end and we'll go up here to F curve. Now let's uh, make this bigger so you can see it a little bit better. So this will constantly be happening. We'll connect this to here and this to here. We'll change where it says play. Oh, did that? Yeah, that connected. Okay. We'll change play to loop end and we'll set the keyframes from 1 to uh, 100. Now, if we start our game up, you can see the elevator moving up and down, up and down. We'll add in a cube here, and we'll make this cube basically kind of like our player. So with the cube selected, we'll come over here to the physics window. We'll make it uh, dynamic in this case, and we'll set the collision bounds to box. Now when we press P, you can see the elevator lifts them up and takes them down. Now obviously if you want the elevator to move faster, you use less keyframes, so it moves it in a shorter amount of time. Now in this case, the elevator is going up and down on its own, which sometimes you may want, but you may also want to control it with a key press. All we have to do is select the elevator, select uh, the type here, and we'll change this to keyboard, and I'll press here and click spacebar. Now the elevator will work when I press spacebar. And there you go, you can see it goes up and goes down. Now, oh and by the way at the end there it will stay down until I press spacebar again. Now you don't want the elevator going up if it's on the other side of the level when you press spacebar so let's add an option here. Let's choose our player here so right click him and we'll add a property. Move this over and we'll label this as player. So our player has a property called player for this particular instance, it doesn't matter what type, as long as it has the name player. Now we'll choose our elevator, and we'll minimize this little window here, and we'll click Add Collision. And we'll say with property player. That means it will only work when you press spacebar, and don't forget to connect this here, and the player is touching the elevator. So we'll press P, and I press spacebar, it goes up and down again. Now if I move my player up a little bit, when I start the game here I'll start hitting spacebar and you'll see the elevator won't move until the player is touching it. So that's how you make it so that the elevator doesn't activate until the player is on it. Now the elevator is going up and down and usually you'd want it to go up or down, you know, depending on whether you are up or down. And a simple way to do that, I'm not really going to go into detail on it, is basically just add more commands, set the keyframes to halfway, so you would set this to 51 for up. So basically it would work when you go up. And you'd set another animation for down, and you'd have to create uh, probably a property. Uh, we can call it up and add, give it a value, and if it's up, it's set to one value. If it's down, it's set to another. All basic stuff I've gone over in previous tutorials, so I'm not going to get into it. But that is the basis 
of making a elevator in Blender using IPO curves or keyframes. Um, and uh, a more efficient way may be to use a Python script, but once again, uh, you can easily do it as you've seen without writing out any code in Blender 3D. Thank you for watching. Please visit the posts in the description, and please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.